this is uh, my second video responding to the Veritasium video about the big misconception in electricity. And this is necessary because I was wrong about some things in my first video that I wanted to correct and also challenge a, uh, another concept that came from the Veritasium video. I've linked uh, my first video below as well as responses to the Veritasium video from some others. So be sure to uh, watch the original Veritasium video if you don't know what I'm talking about at this point. Now, uh, Veritasium presented a question about the time to light a light bulb when a switch is thrown one meter away with very long wires out in each direction. And uh, it was worded in such a way that it could be interpreted that if any current flows at all, the light bulb would light. And the first explanation of that would be if these lines were treated as transmission lines and they would have uh, some impedance. And uh, I calculated some the impedance of a theoretical setup and came up with uh, actual numbers for the current flow from the transient condition. And uh, this, these wires were one meter apart and uh, Derek was trying to show that it would take the speed of light going directly across and not through the wires. And uh, that was to solidify his point that the energy was being transferred through the fields rather than the wires. Now, from his statement about any current flowing, I also came up with, if there's charge on that switch and we start to move it, because there's some capacitance, that will induce a current through the uh, transmission line impedance to the bulb. And although I haven't seen it, I understand there's another video that says there would be leakage current across the switch so that the bulb the current would be at the bulb right from the very beginning. So these are things I really don't want to challenge. Oh, oh, by the way, before I forget, uh, Alpha Phoenix uh, had a did a, an actual setup where he made a transmission line, and he showed that there's an initial current that would be flowing this way before the main current is set up through the uh, actual wires. So that's linked below, so be sure and watch that. But I want to move beyond this to a more important thing. In the original video, uh, Derek spends a lot of time talking about the transmission of AC power to our homes. And uh, he and some other physicists uh, make the point that the actual energy is uh, transferred through the fields and not through the wires. And uh, that's a point I want to challenge now. Uh, for a, a field to transfer energy, it has to be changing in either intensity or direction. A, a permanent magnet does not uh, transfer energy due to its magnetic field uh, unless it's rotating or changing. 
uh, the same would be true for an electromagnet. An electromagnet, you can change its intensity by the amount of current flowing through it. So uh, fields have to be changing in order to convey energy. So I think it's fairly obvious that in a DC circuit, although the pointing vector will tell you which direction the uh, energy is flowing, the energy is not flowing through the fields, it's flowing through the wires. And uh, if you don't believe me in, about that, uh, I'll show some more later. But apparently, uh, the video, the original video, would lead you to believe then that there's a difference between AC power and DC power. And uh, here in the U.S., AC power is at 60 hertz. Uh, in many other countries, it's at 50 hertz. Uh, one of the original dynamos at the Niagara Falls was 25 hertz. So we can obviously transmit power over power lines at various frequencies. And uh, so if the fields are carried, if the fields carry the energy in the AC circuits, uh, why aren't the fields carrying the energy in the DC circuits? And uh, what's the transition point? Uh, let's do a little experiment here. Let, let's say we have a power source that's really an oscillator that we can change the frequency. And then out here's our light bulb. And we just talked about 60 hertz and 50 and 25. What if we... Uh, well, first of all, if we don't, if we're not using AC, if we're using DC, after the fields are established, they no longer change. So there's an initial transient and then a steady state condition. But once we're back to AC, what if we keep going down in frequency, 10 hertz? one hertz. Uh, what about a millionth of a hertz? That's a period of about eleven and a half days. Now if we had our oscillating later running at a millionth of a hertz, if, uh, if we had an ammeter here and a voltmeter, and uh, it was sitting there running. If, uh, if we happen to come upon the setup after a few days, uh, well, I think we, we could look at the meters and say, uh, well, it's DC, because it isn't changing. So where's the transition point between AC and DC? And in, in, in my mind, there is no difference. Uh, I, I don't believe that the fields are carried by the conductors in an AC circuit either. And let's talk about that some more. Uh, Derek shows some high voltage AC power lines in his video. And uh, AC power lines are fed from transformers, three-phase transformers. There's our three wires of our transmission line. But the centers of these transformers are grounded in order to prevent the transmission lines from going uh, extremely high voltages above ground 
due to winds and the uh, atmospheric charge that exists. Now there's, not only is there capacitance between all three wires, there's also capacitance to ground from each wire and the magnetic field around each wire also can cut the ground and cause eddy currents. So there's losses with AC transmission lines. Capacitive coupling to ground induces currents and inductive coupling induces eddy currents which are losses. Also the magnetic fields are radiating out into space. So there's a lot of losses associated with transmitting power through transmission lines to homes and businesses. There are, there are uh, places in the world where there's DC transmission lines and the reason they're used, they step up the voltage and then rectify it and transmit DC power. And uh, I'm not sure that they use three wires in that case. I only know that this process exists. Then at the other end, they have to uh, turn the power back into AC, uh, which can be done with modern semiconductors. So the reason for doing this is to eliminate a lot of losses that come about from AC power lines. So in conclusion, so I think, uh, I think I've shown enough here to uh, convince you that the power is not conveyed through the fields, the power is conveyed through the wires.